Can you get spell backwards and drop the S? Chicken dig! Scared look on my face. Hello, my name is Tony Beers, and this is Movie Grades. Hey everybody, Tony Beers here. And uh, this is a special episode of Movie Grades, and I got my guest stars... Target oh. Stud, Madman Mike. And we're here to review the movie Black Dynamite. We just got, got done watching. They yeah, have this basic story. Some, uh, somebody killed his brother, and he's out to look for revenge, and he's also trying to keep his streets clean of drugs. And Mike, what do you guys say? I love this movie. Yeah. I thought it was really well done. You know, he was actually going back to the times of the old 70s black exploitation movies. It, it was just flat out funny. I was rolling through that whole damn movie because yeah. of how fucking funny that damn thing was. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Uh -huh. <laughs> just the way the storyline was and just how he acted in that movie. He acted so damn serious in this movie. It was hilarious <laughs> as fuck. I'm telling you, man, I love it. Michael Jai White, you know what? I loved him as Spawn. <laughs> I think I like it better as this character, oh, yeah. the Black Dynamite. I think this is fucking hilarious. Michael Jai White is perfect in this role. Um, he wrote it too, right? He, he, it? Yeah, three. Yeah, three people wrote this movie, and even okay. Scott Sanders, the guy who directed it too, wrote, wrote okay. some of it too. You can't find anybody more perfect for this role. He already knows his martial arts, and uh, he, he, you can clearly tell that he is a fan of this genre of black exploitation movies. Obviously, a pet project of his. I mean. This this is something that you can tell he put his heart into the movie. Oh yeah, it's not very often that actors do stuff like that. They actually write a script that they're comfortable with and stuff like that. And he just hit it out of the ballpark with this movie. I oh, enjoyed yeah. this movie. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be an instant classic for years to come. <laughs> I really think it is. Really? And I um, think it's that it's that good of a film. And it's that funny of a film. It's number two on my comedy list. Wow. Unless yes, Michael J. White, you've reached number two on my <laughs> list because Airplane's my number one. Mm. Airplane will always be my number one. reason why I say it moves up to number two on my comedy list is because he played it kind of like Airplane. Like, they take it so damn serious. Oh, you definitely, just, yeah. you, you just can't help but laugh at the stupid shit that's going on around. That's what I loved about this movie. I thought it was hilarious. At least he actually went back because a lot of comedy movies don't do that anymore. They only work on the filthiness and the raunchy humor and shit. This movie right. just had shot it right out of the ballpark. I loved it. It movie. still had a little bit of that to it, but it wasn't... It's a different kind of humor than than you normally see out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm glad you brought up Airplane because that's basically what this movie is. It's it's a parody of the black exploitation movies, just like Airplane was a parody of disaster movies. It's right up there with Naked Gun, which is a parody of cop movies, <laughs> or Spaceballs, which is a parody of science fiction, Star Wars type movies. He did a really good job. I'm really surprised. My, I hope Michael Jai White makes a number two. I'd love to see oh, him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things that I was worried about was rewatchability because me and Madman have already watched it. We had Tony finally watch it. Yeah. We saw it a few days ago, and I was worried about the rewatchability, but I can watch this again and again <laughs> and again. And it's rare for me to say that on a lot of movies, but there are movies yeah. that I can love to watch again and again and again. Just like Mike, yeah, I hope they go for Black Dynamite too. Oh, yeah. And this is the show, other parody movies like Disaster Movie or... Dance Flick. Dance, Dance Flick. Flick. That this is the way parody should be. They should, like you're saying, they should, the characters should be serious for most of the time. Some movies like Black Exploitations in the 70s, they were all serious. They were all trying to be serious but end up being funny just because they're just the nature of the film. They were actually trying to be funny with this one, which actually worked out well. It, it, it kind of reminds me of also of um, the Grindhouse movie, Planet Terror and Proof. Death Proof, that 
they were trying to bring that 70s style of filmmaking out in those two movies, which they succeeded, but I think this movie succeeds more. Wouldn't you guys agree? Oh, I, I totally agree. My, like I said, Michael J. White just really surprised me. I thought it was just going to be another boring parody because of the trailer we saw, but when I saw it in Walmart, I went and bought it. I was like, alright, if it sucks, it sucks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I brought it over that night, and me and RK were fucking laughing our asses off. <laughs> Oh, because of how goddamn good the movie was, and because of how stupid the thing was, it was just hilarious. I thought it was funny. And where they went on each level, I mean, they went, <laughs> they went into a restaurant and, and devised the whole plot. M and M's and Mars and yeah, God of War. And <laughs> that was one of the best scenes. Yeah, that, how anyone could come start with M and M and then end up with malt liquor. <laughs> That, that's, that's beyond me. <laughs> it was funny, especially the scene with, especially the scene with him and uh, Richard Nixon. Yes. <laughs> that was fucking funny oh. too. <laughs> that fight scene was hilarious. Well, before that, motherfucker. Hard. <laughs> before that, they had to go to Kung Fu Island. Yeah, Kung Fu. You know? <laughs> well. <laughs> Which that came out of nowhere too. I mean. So, <laughs> like, I should have known it was whoever the doctor. Dr. Wu! Dr. Wu. Like, and, and this is the first time introducing that character into the movie. And it's like. <laughs> It, it, this almost movie seemed like almost like a sequel in that way, like like uh, because like the the previous movie probably was Doctor Who was a villain or something like that, and it's like that's why I like to see a sequel or a prequel to see some more of these other villains. So the, the villains are the best, the, uh, are the craziest villains, especially um, and even the, his his uh, sidekicks and their all their names were the best: Cream Corn, <laughs> Bullhorn. Gun smoke. Gun smoke. <laughs> that takes a lot to come up with names that fucking funny when you know you first hear them. Because I heard that um, Bullhorn was actually a, was actually supposed to be like Rudy Ray Moore's um, Dolomite, <laughs> and with the way he came in and kicked that dude, the dude dropped his gun. He didn't even touch the dude with. <laughs> that was fucking funny too. I mean, and, and the cut scene, he cut he. he the guy gets hurt and then cut into a different dude. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, this is what movies are missing nowadays. Yeah. And Michael J. White, I tip my hat off to. Yeah, it was. It was. I actually enjoyed this movie. <laughs> Not many comedies I do enjoy. I mean, so yeah, some of them are funny, but this one I tip my hat off to Michael J. White because he actually went back and did it the way comedy should be done nowadays. I loved it. It was. So any, <laughs> any final thoughts? I, I swear, you can't rent it, because after you rent it, you're going to want to own it. Yeah, exactly. It, it, this is a classic buy. I will, though, recommend another movie to, to anyone who likes this movie, and that would be ICP's... Um, uh, well, oh, Big, Big Money, Money Hustlers! Big Money, ICP's Big Money Hustlers it is in the same vein of this movie, uh, if only it's done by a couple of white boys, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, so it doesn't have that same... Yeah. Uh, flavor. Rudy Ray Moore, Moore actually popped up in that movie yes, he too. Did. Yeah, th this movie, I'd say about maybe 10, 15 years down the road, maybe, it'd probably get a big cult following. I, think, I hope so, because uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I think this is going to be a big cult classic. Uh, Instant. It's... Like I said, I'm never that excited about movies anymore because some of them, most of them suck anyway. But like I said, when they come out in Blu-ray or DVD like this, that makes it well worth watching because they're really good and well written. So this one was higher than my expectation, which is which is really <laughs> wonderful. It surprised me too. I didn't think it was gonna be as good because I have to say sometimes I disagree with these guys on their selections of movies and their taste of movies. But that this surprised me. I liked it. So what would your ratings be, Mike? I give it an A, not an A plus, but an A. I give it a B plus. I'm going to be the, the lowest one on here and give it just a solid B. Only because I liked it, but it wasn't as good as some other movies. Like you mentioned, Airplane it was much funnier, I thought. But it is really good. I would recommend it to anybody who likes that, those type of movies from the 70s. Like I said, that movie was pretty damn good for what it was. You job, turkey! <laughs> <laughs> That's it from us three honkies here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.